Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And in the course Enzyme Science and Technology, we are discussing about the different properties of the enzymes. And in this context, if you recall, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the general properties of the enzymes and uh, what are the historical aspects of the development of this field of enzymology and so on. So in the current lecture, we are going to discuss more about the enzyme classification and how the enzymes are being classified. Now let's move on to the next class and the next class is called as the transferases and transferases are belonging to a group which is called as the EC2. As the name suggests transferases means it is actually going to transfer the group from one in, uh, substrate molecule to another substrate molecule. So it actually catalyzes the transfer reactions, which means transfer of a functional group from the one substrate to another substrate. And the group what is going to be transferred either would be a methyl group, alcyl group, amino groups or the phosphorus group, phospho groups. There are many more groups, but it actually catalyzes. These are the simple uh, examples uh, what I have given. It could actually catalyze even the carboxyl group. It also catalyzes the other kind of groups as well. So what reaction it catalyzes? If you suppose you have a substrate AB, it reacts with C, then you have an enzyme and that enzyme is actually going to, uh, you know, transfer the group. So B is a group, right, on the A and that actually is going to be transferred onto the BC. I can give you an example like, for example, the glucose. Uh, which and then ATP and then you have the A ATP. So ATP I can just write like this, right? And then it is actually going to form the glucose 6 phosphates and the enzyme is hexokinase, right? And it is actually going to form the ADP. So what is happening is that this is actually getting uh, transferred onto the glucose and that's how it is actually going to form the glucose cis phosphate. So the cofactor, cofactors are magnesium, manganese. In some cases, you can also have the coenzyme. So coenzyme A, for example, is the very classical coenzyme A, which actually participate into the acyl transferases. Examples are kinases, transferases, some of the uh, RNA polymerases. So RNA polymerase is also a transferase because it is transferring the nucleotide from the joint on the growing chain, right? So it is actually transferring the nucleotide from the uh, on the growing uh, RNA chain. Okay, so that's how it is actually also belonging to the same group of the transferases. So they transfer the group, mostly the protein onto the protein, DNA, lipids and the carbohydrate. Many of these modifications modulate the activity of the enzyme. So transferases are a very, very big group. And within these transferases, we have the different types of enzymes which can actually transfers the group onto the protein, DNA, lipids or the carbohydrates. And that's how by doing so, they are actually changing the properties of these molecules. For example, you know that when the enzymes are getting phosphorylated, it is getting uh, changes its uh, uh, catalytic activity. Some In some cases, the phosphorylation is making it more active or in some cases, the phosphorylation is actually, uh, you know, making it less active. And that's how you will see some of the cl these kind of classification, uh, classical examples when we talk about the pyruvate uh, dehydrogenase or when we talk about the PFK1 and all those kind of enzymes. Now, the transferases are further being classified into the subclasses. So you can have the EC2.1. So these are the enzymes which are transferring the one carbon group. Then we can have the EC2.2. These are the enzyme which are transferring the aldehyde or the ketonic group. Then we have the EC2.3. These are the acyl transferases and we have EC2.4. These are the glycosyl transferases, which means they are actually going to transfer the uh, glucose molecules. This one is actually going to transfer the acyl group. Then we have the EC2.5. These are the transferring the alkyl or the aryl groups, which means they are actually going to transfer the carbon-carbon uh, other than the methyl groups. Okay. 
then we have EC2.6 these are the enzyme which are transferring the nitrogenous group then we have EC2.7 these are the groups which are transferring the phosphorus containing groups so this means the kinase is belonging to this particular class that is the EC2.7 then we have EC2.8 these are the enzyme which are transferring the sulfur containing groups so sulfur containing group which means the thioester or thiol uh, these kind of groups and then we have EC2.9, these are the transferring the selenium containing groups. And within these uh, groups, you can have also the subgroups like for example 2.1, these are the enzyme which are transferring the one carbon group. So within that you have the methyl transferases, hydroxymethyl transferases, formyl and related transferases, carboxyl and carbamoyl transferases and the amino transferases. Similarly, 2.2 group also can have the, uh, they are transferring the aldehyde or ketone group and 2.3 acyl groups and the glycosyl transferase. The reaction what they are going to catalyze is also being like uh, the, the 2.1 for example is working on the C group, right? So it can be methyl transferases or hydroxymethyl transferases and so on. And that's how they are actually going to catalyze these kind of reactions. So in those cases uh, where you have methyl, it is actually going to use the S-adenosyl methionine. S-adenosyl methionine as the cofactor. And that's how you are actually going to have the tra methyl transferases. Similarly, you can have the hydroxymethyl transferases where sometimes they use the pyridoxal phosphate or the uh, tetrahydrofolate. And then we have the uh, hydroxymethyl transferase uh, and in this case we have the transaminases. Then the 2.2 is aldehyde or the keto group and these are the reaction what it is actually going to catalyze where they are also using the different types of uh, the uh, cofactors like the uh, so these are the trans aldolases or the trans ketolases. Then we have the 2.3 which is acyl groups and these acyl groups are uh, transferring the acyl uh, group and that's how it, they are called as the acyl group. Then we have 2.4 which is the glycosyl groups. So these are the hexosyl groups and all that. Then we have the 2.6 which is the end containing group. So they will actually going to catalyze this reactions and that's how they are actually going to transfer the end containing groups. And so end, they will transfer this end containing uh, group onto the new molecule. And then we have the 2.7 containing which is P containing groups and that's how it is actually going to transfer the phosphorus from this particular thing. Now if we talk about the mechanism, so mechanism is very very complicated. So we will take a just example of the kinase for example, okay. So if I take a kinase, so you know that the kinase, how the mechanism is actually going, how the kinase is actually going to work. So if you talk about the substrate for example, right, so uh, this is the substrate for the uh, kinase. So, so, this is actually a uh, substrate, okay. So, this is the ATP molecule what the kinase is actually going to use for its reactions, okay. And this is the sixth, uh, fifth, uh, sixth carbon, okay. So, this is the ATP molecule what it is actually going to use and it is actually going to transfer the uh, groups onto the alcohol group, okay. So, for example, this is actually a protein. So if it is a protein, so this is not a phosphorus, this is a protein actually. And uh, so it has a lot of amino acids. So terminal amino acid is some place is serine. So uh, the serine has the hydroxyl group. And this lone pair of electron, what you see is actually going to act onto the gamma phosphate. So in this case, what you see here is ATP has three phosphate, right? So this is the first phosphate, this is the second phosphate, this is the third phosphate and this is called as alpha phosphate, this is called beta phosphate and this is called as the gamma phosphate. So what it is going to do is these lone pair of electron what is present onto the oxygen is actually going to act onto this bond and that is how there will be a internal rearrangement and then this phosphate is actually going to be transferred onto this and that's how it is actually going to form the this okay and that's how it is actually going to form the phosphorylated product whether 
this product whether this is a protein or whether it is a carbohydrate or whether it is a DNA. So, it is actually modifying the all the biomolecules whether it is a carbohydrate, whether it is a uh, protein or whether it is a lipid or whether it is a DNA. So, let us take an example of some of these biomolecules. So, in the case of carbohydrate modifications, carbohydrate modifications uh, are very very much found in many uh, carbohydrate metabolism. So, for example, in the glycolysis, right. So, you know that the glycolysis is starting with the first reaction by when the glucose is getting converted into the glucose 6 phosphate and it is a reaction which actually commits this glucose into the glycolysis. Now, from here there will be another round of glyc another round of uh, uh, the kinase reaction and that is how it is actually going to form the glucose 1, 6 bisphosphate right and that is how you have the two kinase reactions one which is actually going to be catalyzed by the hexokinase and the another one which is going to be catalyzed by the another kinase. And both the places you are actually going to have the similar kind of mechanism where we have just now we have discussed right the, all the glucose also has the OH right and this OH has a lone pair of electron and that is actually going to act onto the gamma phosphate of the ATP and that is how it is actually going to you know uh, form the bonds. Then we have the protein modifications, protein modifications can be that where a protein can be uh, converted into a phosphorylated proteins right. So, this is actually being catalyzed by the protein kinase. So, you can have the different types of protein kinases whether it is a serine kinase or threonine kinase or tyrosine kinase and that actually is going to convert into the this protein into the protein phosphate and we have class very many classical examples like the AKT we can have the many enzymes uh, which are actually being uh, converted into this way and in some cases this protein which is native protein is less active okay and some when it, it is getting phosphorylated it is become more active right but in some cases this case this uh, whole thing is getting reversed okay which means the phosphorylated protein is less active and the uh, less uh, native protein is more active. Now once the phosphorylated protein is formed it can be converted back into the non phosphorylated protein and the enzyme is phosphatases okay. So phosphatases are also going to catalyze this but phosphatase does not belong to the transferase class. Then we have the DNA modifications and the DNA modification is actually going to be catalyzed. So, in this case for example, we have talking about the methyl uh, transferases right. So, if you have the methylated DNA that has a very very much high significance in terms of asking the uh, restriction enzymes to recognize the self versus non-self. So, that is actually going to work in terms of uh, giving the ability to this restriction enzyme to recognize which DNA is self and which DNA is non-self and you know that the methylated DNA is actually going to be convert uh, considered as self DNA whereas the non-methylated DNA is going to be called as no, uh, non-self DNA which means this non-methylated DNA is going to be degraded by the restriction enzyme systems. Now let us move on to the third enzyme. So we have discussed about the oxidoreductase, we discussed about the transferases and now we are going to talk about the hydrolases. So hydrolase is belonging to the EC class 3. Hydrolase is catalyzing the degradation reaction which means the formation of the two product from the substrate by the hydrolysis with the help of the water. So, water is very important. If water is not involved, it is not the hydrolysis. So, AB which is a substrate when it reacts with water in the presence of the enzyme, it is actually going to form the AOH plus BH and that is how it is actually going to form the two products and that is how it is actually going to be degraded. 
Classical examples are lipases, amylases, peptidases and the phosphatases. Lipases, the enzyme which is actually going to work on the lipids. Uh, then we have the peptidases, the enzyme which are actually going to work on the peptide bonds and the phosphatases which are actually going to work on the phosphorylated uh, products. Now these hydrolases are further being classified into the sub subclass. Okay, so for example, the EC 3.1, it is acting on the ester bonds. EC 3.2, which is actually working on the these are the glycolases, so they will work on the glycosidic bonds. Then EC 3.3 is acting on the ether bonds. So depending on which bond they are breaking, they are further being classified into the different subgroups. So EC 3.4, it is acting on the peptide bond. So these are the peptidases. Then we see 3.5, which is acting on the carbon and nitrogen bond, which means it is actually you know, breaking this bond. Okay. Uh, then we have the EC 3.6. So these are the enzyme which are acting on the acid anhydrides. Then we have the EC 3.7. These are the enzyme which are acting on the carbon carbon bond, which means they are going to break this bond. Then we have the EC 3.8. These are the enzyme which are acting onto the halide bonds. And then we have the EC 3.9. These are the enzyme which are acting onto the phosphorus and nitrogen bond, which means they are actually going to act onto this bond. And then we have the EC 3.10. These are the sulfur nitrogen bonds. Then we have EC 3.11, which are carbon phosphorus and so on. Okay. And these are being further divided into the sub subgroups, right? For example, the EC 3.1, which is actually an enzyme which is acting on the ether bonds, are further divided into the subgroups. So 3.1 is the enzyme which is going to work on to the carboxylic ester hydrolases. Okay. Then we have the thiol ester hydrolases. Then we have the phosphoric monoester hydrolases phosphoric diester hydrolases and triphosphate phosphoric monoester hydrolases. Similarly, the, uh, the enzyme belonging to the glycolases 3.4, 3.3 can be further sub uh, divided into the subclasses. The reaction what it is actually going to catalyze, for example, the 3.1, 3.1 is the esterases. So, esterases are actually going to catalyze the degradation of the esters, right? So you can have the ester like R1CO, R2 and that is actually going to degrade by the, uh, you know, by the carboxylic acid esterases to form the uh, acid and as well as the alcohol. Similarly, all these the glycosidases, these are actually going to form the degradation of the, uh, the sugar groups. So they are actually going to degrade this. Similarly, we can have the protein and peptides 3.4, so amino peptidases, carboxy peptidases, dipeptidases, proteinase peptidases. So depending on this, they actually are going to act on the different types of substrates. And then we also going to have the CN bond in the non-peptide bond and that's also going to work. So how these enzymes are working, how they are actually acting on the different substrate and cleaving the bonds. So Hydrolases are actually catalyzing this because they have the um, uh, classical groups of the amino acids present within the active site and these amino acids are withdrawing the uh, electrons and they are actually stabilizing the uh, products and that's how they are actually going to cleave. So for example, I have taken an example of this. This is an enzyme which uh, this is a metallo enzyme, right? So uh, this is a metalloprotease and uh, uh, which is present in the plasmodium falciparum okay and it actually catalyzes these reactions so in these reactions the substrate like the the residues like the e136 and one d120 is actually being present close to the uh, reaction center and that's how it, they are actually going to stabilize the incoming peptides and then the uh, phenylalanine 53 which is lies at the S1 site and it is actually going to interact with the aromatic residues which are present in the peptide bonds or which are present in the peptide substrates. And then the E49 which is within the hydrogen bonding distance of the water molecule. So it is actually going to stabilize the water molecule because 
you know that these are the hydrolysis so they are actually going to use the water molecule so once the peptide is entering it is actually going to form this uh, complex and then there will be a nucleophilic attack onto the peptide carbonyl bond and that's how it is actually going to form the tetrahedral intermediate and that tetrahedral intermediate is actually going to be stabilized by the different types of the amino acid residues what are present within the active site of this particular metalloprotease and that's how it is actually going to ultimately cleave off the peptide bond and it is actually going to release the product and that's how it is actually going to form the enzyme carboxylate complex and from here the enzyme carboxylate complex the carboxylate uh, uh, what and the water molecule is going to be released and that's how it is actually going to acquire the native conformation and that native conformation is again going to be ready for taking up the new substrate molecule. Now the uh, classical examples where they these enzymes are actually having the very very high um, application is the digestive system okay. So digestive system is the classical example where the lot of hydrolysis are actually being involved into the catalyst into the digestion process. This is what you see here is that if you have a carbohydrate it will enter into the buccal cavity so carbohydrate is the maltose okay. So once the carbohydrate is present into the buccal cavity which means it is present in our mouth it is actually going to be get converted into the uh, so this polymeric sugar is actually going to be get converted into the maltose and the enzyme the the uh, hydrolytic enzyme what is actually going to catalyze this reaction is called as maltase so once the maltose is entered it enters into the stomach and from the stomach it is actually going to be get converted into these and these products and the, there are some enzymes like the maltase and it is actually going to convert the maltose into the limit dextran maltose and isomaltose and from here it is actually again going to be act on to the maltase and that's how it is actually going to be converted into the glucose molecule and that's how the glucose is actually going to be absorbed by the elementary canal. Similarly, if, we, if it is a fat, so fat is a long chain polymer. So there will be no enzyme available within the mouth, which is actually going to, uh, you know, digest the fat. And then within the stomach, it is actually going to be digested to the fatty acid and glycerol. And then it is actually going to be converted into the different types of hydrolytic enzymes into the diglyceride, monoglyceride and so on. And ultimately, it is actually going to be converted into the fatty acid. And once it gets converted into fatty acid and glycerol, it is also going to be available for the absorption by the um, for um, by the small intestine then the, for the proteins uh, protein is actually going to be get converted into the peptones uh, and then the peptone is getting converted into the large peptide so at this stage uh, within the stomach it can be act by the by the some of the uh, classical hydrolytic enzyme like the pepsin and all that and ultimately it is going to form the amino acids and that also is available for digestion. Similarly, we can also have the DNA and RNA and that also is going to be converted into nucleotide within the, uh, within the small intestine and the enzyme is nucleotidase, right? So that is also a, uh, the uh, hydrolytic enzymes and that's how it is actually going to form the monomeric molecules and that's how they will be actually going to be absorbed. Now, so, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the oxidoreductase, we discuss about the transferases, we discuss about the hydrolysis and now let's talk about the lyases which is belonging to the EC class 4. So, lyases are actually the enzyme which are belonging to EC class 4 and what reaction they catalyze is the reaction they catalyze is the non-hydrolytic degradation of the chemical bond which means they are actually going to do the same function what the hydrolases are doing but in the absence of water right. So lyases are also causing the degradation of the chemical bond which means they are actually going to break the bond but they will not utilize the water they will utilize some other molecule. 
so the non hydrolytic addition or the removal of the group from the substrate that is a reaction what is going to be catalyzed by the lyases for example the cc bond cn bond co bond or cs bond so when it going to break this bond it is actually going to utilize except water some other molecules for example rcocoh so this is uh, the substrate when it get get the lyases right uh, it is actually going to get converted into the carbon dioxide is going to be removed right and it is actually going to form the RCOH. So, this is actually a decarboxylation reactions right which is actually going to remove the carbon dioxide. Classical example is decarboxylation reaction which is catalyzed by the pyruvate decarboxylase. Now, the lyases can be further divided into subclasses. So, these subclasses are 4.1 the lyases which are working on to the carbon carbon bond, EC 4.2 the carbon oxygen bond, EC 4.3 carbon nitrogen bonds, EC 4.4 carbon sulfur bonds, EC 4.5 carbon halide right. So, carbon and chloride then the EC 4.6 the phosphorus oxygen bond which means this bond and the EC 4.99 which is the other lyases belonging to the uh, other classes. Then these uh, groups are further subclassified into the sub subclasses. So, for example, the 4.1 the carbon carbon lyases could be the 4.1.1 is the carboxy lyases, 4.1.2 is aldehyde lyases, 4.1.3 is oxo acid lyases and 4.1.99 are the other carbon carbon lyases. So, this is just a classical way of the classifying the uh, subgroups into the sub subgroups. Uh, we have subgroups for this one also, we have subgroups for this one also and we have subgroups for all these uh, groups also. What reaction they catalyze is? So, reaction involving the cleavage or the condensation of the molecule without without the help of the water is the part of the lyases which means for example the 4.1. So, 4.1.1 is actually going to catalyze this reaction uh, 4.1.1 is actually going to so for, for example they will utilize the pyridoxal phosphate and that is how they will be catalyzing the decarboxylation reactions. Similarly, we can have 4.1.2 where it is actually going to catalyze the uh, degradation with the help of uh, the enzyme is aldolases. Then we have the carbon oxygen bond. So, this is a carbon oxygen bond and it is actually going to form the carbon double bond. So, there will be a loss of a carbon oxygen bond here. Then we have the CN bond. So, it is actually going to act on this and that is how it is actually going to form this. So, classical example in this case is pyruvate decarboxylase okay, which is actually be a part of the uh, anaerobic oxidation and that is how the pyruvate decarboxylase is actually going to convert the pyruvate into the acetaldehyde and that is how it is actually going to participate into the alcohol production. So, pyruvate is getting converted into the acetaldehyde and in this process one molecule of carbon dioxide is going to be removed from the pyruvate and the reaction is going to be catalyzed by the pyruvate decarboxylase which is a lyase. So, let us take see how the pyruvate decarboxylase is catalyzing this reactions. So, pyruvate decarboxylase uh, mediated conversion of pyruvate to acetaldehyde is catalyzed by the pyruvate decarboxylase. It is a 6 step reaction. So, in the step 1 you are going to have the deprotonation of the TPP to form the TPP carbonion ion. Okay. So, this is the TPP carbonion ion what is going to be formed in the step 1. Then the, the step 2 you are going to have the carbonion attack onto the carbonyl group of the pyruvate to form the adduct. Then in the step 3 there will be a release of carbon dioxide. So, there will be a decarboxylation reactions. Okay. And in the step 4 there will be a resonance stabilization of the intermediate and in the step 5 there will be a protonation of the uh, hydroxylmethyl TPP and that is how in the step 6 there will be a release of the acetaldehyde 
and the regeneration of TPP from the hydroxyl TPP for the next round of the enzymatic catalysis. So these are the six step what it is going to be catalyzed by the pyruvate decarboxylase to convert the pyruvate into the acetaldehyde and that acetaldehyde is actually going to be taken up by the alcohol de, uh, dehydrogenases to convert the acetaldehyde into the alcohol. Now we have already discussed about the lyases. Now we will talk about another class which is called as the isomerases. It belongs to the EC5. So EC isomerases are the enzyme which belongs to the class EC5. It catalyzes the reaction of intramolecular rearrangement reaction which means the isomerization changes within the single molecule which means if there is a substrate called XYZ it is going to be get converted into XZY. So it that is going to be catalyzed by the isomerases. So in this the groups it is not changing the substrate, it is not degrading the substrate, it is just changing the position of the group within the molecule and that is how it is actually going to cause the generation of the different types of isomers. Examples are isomerases and the mutases. For example, phosphohexose isomerase. Okay. So phosphohexose isomerase is actually going to catalyze the isomerizations. Isomerase can be further subclassified. For example, the EC5.1 which is the racemiases and epimerases, EC5.2 which is the cistran isomerases, EC5.3 intramolecular isomerases, EC4.4 the intramolecular transferases, EC5.5 the intramolecular lyases and EC5.99 that are the either isomerases. So what you see here is that all these subgroups are actually catalyzing the isomerization, different types of isomerization whether it is the racemerizations, epimerizations, cistrans isomerizations and so on. And all these subgroups are subclasses are further classified into sub subclass. So for example, the 5.1 it is actually going to be catalyzed into racemiases and epimerases, right. So within this also you can have the 5.1.1 that is acting on to the amino acids and derivatives, 5.1.12 is acting on to the hydroxy acids and derivatives, 5.1.3 is acting on to the carbohydrate and its derivative and 5.1.4 is acting on to the other compounds. Similarly, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5 and 5.99 can be further classified into the subgroups depending on the other type of reaction or bond what it is actually going to uh, act to form the isomers. These are the reactions what it is actually going to catalyze. For example, the epimerases. So epimerases are actually going to you know act on to the particular group and that is how you will see that it is actually changing the position of the R1 from the up, uh, above to the uh, surface to the lower to the surface. So it is actually causing the epimerizations. Then you can also form the cis trans isomerization. So it actually can change the position from this side to this side and that is how it is actually going to form the cis trans uh, isomerizations. Then it also can cause the intramolecular oxidation. So that is how it is actually going to form the isomers. And then it also can cause the intramolecular transfers and that is how it is actually going to uh, for example, in this case you see the R2 is connected to C2 whereas R1 is connected to C1 and uh, this enzyme has catalyzed the reaction and that is how the R2 is now connected to C1 and R1 is connected to C2. So that is how it is actually going to be catalyzed different types of reactions like the uh, cis trans isomerizations, DNL racemizations or the epimerizations like the optical rearrangement or sometimes the intramolecular rearrangement that enzyme is called as the mutases. So isomerization, I, you, you might have seen the reactions where the glucose 6-phosphate is getting converted into fructose 6-phosphate and the enzyme is called as the phosphohexose isomerase. So this is the enzyme uh, what it is going to cause, right. So in the step 1, you are actually going to use the hexokinase to convert the glucose to the glucose 6-phosphate and then this glucose 6-phosphate is acting converted into the phosphoisomerase and it is actually going to form the fructose 6-phosphate and that is how the 
fructose 6-phosphate will further enter into the glycolysis. So we have discussed about the oxidoreductase, transferases, hydrolases, lyases and isomerases and now we will talk about the ligases. So ligases as the name suggests, so ligases are belonging to the EC class 6 and they are catalyzing the joining reactions. So they join together to two molecule by the synthesis of the new molecule which means C, either the formation of CO bond, CS bond, CN bond or CC bond. So ligases are opposite to the lyases, right. So these are, these enzymes are breaking down the molecules, these enzymes are synthesizing the new molecule. And when they are synthesizing the new molecule, in many cases they are also breaking down the ATP which means they are actually taking up the energy from the ATP to break the bonds. So for example, in this case X plus Y plus ATP and then it is actually going to catalyze the synthesis of XY and the ATP is going to be broken down into ADP plus PI. So when it is broken down the ATP, it is actually releasing some energy. So ATP is releasing some energy and that's how it, that in, uh, release energy is utilized to activate the bonds onto the X and Y and that's how the X and Y are forming the bond together. Examples are synthetases. Ligases are further being classified based on the different types of bonds what is actually going to catalyze. So for example, EC 6.1, it is forming the bond between carbon and oxygen. EC 6.2, it is forming a bond between carbon and sulfur. EC 6.3, it is forming a bond between carbon and nitrogen. EC 6.4, it is forming a bond between carbon and carbon. 6.5, forming a bond between phosphoric ester. And then EC 6.6, .6, it is forming a bond between nitrogen and metal. And these groups are further being classified into sub subclasses and these are the subclasses like for example 6.1 is being classified into 6.1.1, 6.2 is classified into this subclass and so on. And these are the reaction what it is actually going to catalyze. So for example 6.1 it is forming the bond between carbon and oxygen. So for example this is the acid right some amino acid and it is actually going to form this and ultimately it is going to form this. So that is the synthetasis. Then we can also have the thiokinase. So thiokinase is forming this bond between the carbon and uh, sulfur, right? And then we can also have the CN bond. So CN bond is actually going to synthesize this and you see in all these reactions, the ATP is actually working as a source of energy because you require a energy if you want to synthesize the new compounds. You will get the energy when there will be a breakdown. Classical example is DNA ligases. So DNA ligases could be the NAD, NAD dependent DNA ligases or the ATP dependent DNA ligases. So classical example is T4 DNA ligase or the E. coli DNA ligases. And what they are going to do is they are actually going to form a ester linkage between the two strands of the DNA of uh, two fragments of the DNA and that's how they are actually going to form the phosphodiester linkage and that's how they are actually going to link the two DNA molecules. So this is what we have discussed so far. What we have discussed, we have discussed about the classification of the enzyme. We discussed how, why it is important for classifying the enzyme and why, what is the advantage of classifying the enzyme. And uh, by going through this whole uh, uh, lecture, you might have understood and appreciate that by classifying the, uh, the, these groups into the different classes, we have made the study of an enzyme more and more sophisticated and systematic and because of that you can be able to uh, you know you can be able to recognize or identify the new enzymes you can be able to uh, you know uh, if you have identified an enzyme it can be help in terms of characterizing that enzyme as well. So in summary we have what we have discussed today we have discussed about the classification of the enzyme into six classes we discussed about the oxidoreductase the enzyme which are actually going to catalyze the oxidation reaction reactions when this we talk about transferases so transferase is the one of the biggest group 
what is present in the enzyme classes and they are actually transferring the phosphate groups from the to the different biomolecules whether it is the carbohydrates dna proteins and the lipids and that's how they are actually uh, you know changing the biological activity of these all these molecules then we have the hydrolases the hydrolases are uh, catalyzing the breakdowns of the different types of substrates and they are always using the water as one of the substrate to catalyze that the major chunk or the major place where the hydrolases are actively participating into the reaction is the digestive system where most of the hydrolases are uh, degrading the polymeric uh, food into the monomeric substances and these monomeric substances are being absorbed by the uh, elementary canal. Then we have the lyases. So lyases are also doing the same reaction as the hydrolases but they are not using the water as one of the substrate. Instead of water, they are utilizing the other substrate to catalyze the breakdown of the bonds. And then we have the isomerases. Isomerases are catalyzing the isomerization of the molecules. So they can be catalyzed the racemizations, epimerizations, cis trans uh, uh, isomers and so on. And then at the end, we also discuss about the ligases, the molecule which are actually going to join the two molecules. And that's how they are actually being part of the synthesis of synthesis of the new molecule. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss more aspects related to enzymes. Thank you. Thank you.